Hello, I'm Dr. Cezanne Altu, a gastroenterologist with Bay Area Gastroenterology. I specialize in the diagnosis and treatment of gastrointestinal disorders, including liver and pancreas. Today, I'm going to speak about celiac disease, a topic that has become increasingly popular in the news. More and more people are becoming aware of the disease because of the many books and articles being written about the subject. There is a growing number of gluten-free foods located in the grocery store for people who have celiac disease. And there are many people who are not diagnosed with celiac disease who try a gluten-free diet in order to decrease symptoms that they may be having. So what is celiac disease and how is it different from gluten intolerance? Celiac disease is an immune disease that can affect both male and females of all ages and it is found primarily in those of European descent. It is characterized by the body's abnormal response to gluten, which leads to damage of the small intestinal lining, and this subsequently can lead to problems with absorbing nutrients. The disease does have a hereditary component. We know that 95% of people who have celiac disease are positive for a gene called HLA DQ2 or DQ8. 10 to 15% of first degree relatives of celiac patients also will develop the disease. Symptoms of celiac can vary. People can have excess gas, bloating, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and weight loss. Some people, however, present with signs and symptoms of nutritional deficiencies. For example, bone loss can occur, and this is due to malabsorption of vitamin D and calcium. People can present with anemia, and this is related to deficiencies in iron, vitamin B12, or folate. People also can present with disorders of other organ systems. We see patients who have elevated liver enzymes, migraine headaches, nerve-related pains called neuropathies, and even some people develop a characteristic rash. This rash is called dermatitis herpetiformis, and it may be seen even without other gastrointestinal symptoms. The rash is characterized by a blister-like rash which tends to be itchy. Celiac disease can also be associated with other immune conditions such as type 1 diabetes and thyroid diseases. Some people, however, may be completely asymptomatic or with very mild symptoms. Because of this, celiac may go undiagnosed. Even when symptoms are present, they may be so similar to other conditions such as irritable bowel syndrome that this may prolong the time it takes to actually diagnose the condition. Testing for celiac should be done in anyone who has the symptoms that I have mentioned, especially those who are unexplained. People should also get tested if they have unexplained nutritional deficiencies and in all first degree relatives of celiac patients. Evaluation usually begins with a blood test, the most reliable being a blood test for IgA tissue transglutaminase. The gold standard, however, remains a small intestinal biopsy. This can be done by a simple procedure called an EGD or upper endoscopy. Normally, the intestine have villi, which are finger-like projections which help in the absorption of nutrients. Those people who have celiac will show a characteristic flattening or blunting of the villi. This leads to a decreased surface area for absorption and people can develop nutritional deficiencies. It is very important that when one is being tested for celiac disease that the person be eating gluten, otherwise the test may be negative. Treatment of the disease involves a gluten-free diet. Avoidance of gluten can be very daunting because so many items have gluten in it. Wheat, barley, rye, oats, brewer's yeast, and processed foods all contain gluten. Some things that one would never even consider also contain gluten, such as lip balms. It is important to treat patients with celiac disease with a gluten-free diet to decrease not only their symptoms as well as improve their nutritional deficiencies, but also to protect them from developing complications related to celiac. Ulcerative jejunitis is a severe inflammation of the small bowel which can be seen in celiac patients that are untreated. Also, celiac patients have an increased risk of developing small bowel tumors, specifically lymphoma. 
There is also a condition called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. In this particular disorder, people will have sensitivities to gluten, and they may have some of the similar symptoms related to celiac disease, such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, gas, and bloating. However, these people will not have the characteristic damage to the small intestine, they will not have the nutritional deficiencies, and they are not at risk for complications such as small intestinal lymphomas. They will, however, respond to a gluten-free diet, and their symptoms will improve. If you have any of these symptoms or any other gastrointestinal issues you would like evaluated, make an appointment and get checked and be on your path to wellness.